we want to find the general solution on the interval from zero to infinity of the given second order linear homogeneous differential equation that has a solution of y1 equals x to the power of negative one. And we'll be using the method of reduction of order to determine the general solution. To use the method of reduction of order, we must be given one solution to the differential equation, which we were given. The method of reduction of order is a method to reduce a second order differential equation to a linear first order differential equation to help solve the given equation. We start by assuming the second solution will be in the form of y2 of x equals u of x times y1 of x, where u of x is some function of x, and y1 of x is the given solution. And as long as y1 and y2 are linearly independent, the general solution will be the linear combinations of y1 and y2. So going back to our work, we let y2 of x equal u of x times y1 of x. Let's write that as y2 equals just u times y1 of x, which is x to the power of negative one. And now we determine y2 prime and y2 double prime. y2 prime requires the product rule. y2 prime is equal to u times the derivative of x to the power of negative one with respect to x, which is negative one x to the power of negative two. Let's put the negative in the front. And then we have plus x to the power of negative one times the derivative of u with respect to x, which is u prime. And now we can find y2 double prime, which is going to require the product rule twice. The derivative of negative u x to the power of negative two is equal to negative u times negative two x to the power of negative three, or two u x to the power of negative three, and then plus x to the power of negative two times the derivative of negative u with respect to x, which is negative u prime. So this becomes minus, and then we have u prime and then plus the derivative of x to the power of negative one u prime, which is x to the power of negative one u double prime, plus u prime times the derivative of x to the power of negative one, which is negative x to the power of negative two. So this becomes minus, and we have x to the power of negative two. Let's go ahead and simplify y two double prime. We have one u double prime term, so we have x to the power of negative one u double prime, here, we have two u prime terms here and here, which gives us minus two x to the power of negative two u prime, and then plus two x to the power of negative three u. And now we substitute y two, y two prime, and y two double prime into the given differential equation, which gives us two x squared times x to the negative one u double prime minus two x to the power of negative two u prime plus two x to the power of negative three u. And then we have plus x times y two prime is negative u, x to the power of negative two plus x to the power of negative one u prime then we have minus three y, or minus three times y two, which is minus three u x to the power of negative one equals zero. And now we clear the parentheses by distributing two x squared and distributing x. This gives us two x u double prime minus four u prime plus four x to the power of negative one u. And now distributing x, we have negative x to the power of negative one u, and then plus u prime. Let's write the last term as minus three x to the power of negative one u equals zero. And now we combine like terms. When we have one u double prime term, we have two x u double prime. And now let's look at the u prime terms. We have negative four u prime plus u prime, which gives us minus three u prime. Now looking at the u terms, we have four x to negative one u minus x to negative one u minus three x to negative one u, which simplifies to zero. So the differential equation simplifies to two x u double prime minus three u prime equals zero. And then from here, because there's no longer a u in the differential equation, we can perform a substitution. We can let w, equal u prime, 
and therefore w prime is equal to u double prime. Performing this substitution gives us a differential equation, two x w prime minus three w equals zero. Notice now we have a first order linear homogeneous differential equation, which we can solve using separation of variables or an integrating factor. I'm gonna go ahead and use separation of variables. Let's first write w prime as dw dx, which gives us two x times dw dx. Let's go ahead and add three w to both sides, which gives us equals three w. From here, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by one over two x, as well as one over w, which gives us one over w dw dx equals, equals, we'd have three halves times one over x. And then we can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which gives us one divided by w dw equals three halves times one over x dx. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. Because we're solving on the interval from zero to infinity, we can leave off the absolute value. We have natural log w equals three halves natural log x, and then plus a constant, which we'll call c sub one. Now we need to solve for w. Let's first apply the power property of logs on the right by moving the coefficient of three halves to the position of the exponent on x. And now if we exponentiate both sides of the equation with a base of e, the left side simplifies to w, we have w equals, on the right we have e to the power of natural log x to the three halves, and then times e to the power of c sub one. Simplifying again, we have w equals x to the power of three halves times some constant, which we'll call c sub two. Let's write w as w equals c sub two times x to the power of three halves. Now that we have w, and we know u prime equals w, we can recover u by integrating w. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, we know that w equals c sub two x to the power of three halves, and w is equal to u prime, which means we can recover u by integrating c sub two x to the power of three halves with respect to x. This gives us u is equal to c sub two times x to the power of five halves divided by five halves, or two fifths x to the power of five halves, plus a constant which we'll call c sub three. Notice u is a family of functions. We can use any of these functions for u to make u as simple as possible. Let's let c sub three equal zero and c sub two equal five halves. And therefore we can use u equals just x to the power of five halves. And therefore, our second solution, y2, which again is equal to u times x to the power of negative one, is x to the power of five halves times x to the power of negative one, which is equal to x to the power of three halves. And now we can finally determine the general solution. We know one solution is y1 equals x to the power of negative one. We know a second solution is y2 equals x to the power of three halves. These two functions are linearly independent and therefore the general solution is the set of linear combinations of these two functions, which means the general solution is y of x equals, we've already used c sub one through c sub three, so we'll say c sub four times y one, which is x to the power of negative one, and then plus c sub five times y two, which is x to the power of three halves. I hope you found this helpful.